Hi, my friends. Welcome to CollabShare channel. The purpose of this video tutorial is to provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up Celery in a Python project. You will learn how to install and configure Celery and its dependencies, including a message broker such as RabbitMQ. You will also learn how to define and run Celery tasks, pass arguments to tasks, and retrieve their results. By the end of this video tutorial, you will have a solid basic understanding of how to set up Celery for use in your Python projects. What is Celery? Celery is a distributed task queue that allows you to run background tasks asynchronously in your application. It's particularly useful for tasks that are time consuming or resource intensive, such as sending emails, processing large data sets, or generating reports. By offloading these tasks to background workers, Celery can help improve the performance and also scalability of your Python application. And it frees up server resources to handle other requests. In computer science, a task queue is a data structure used for managing and executing tasks or jobs asynchronously. A task queue acts as a buffer that stores a set of tasks or jobs that need to be processed by one or more worker threads or processes. When a new task is added to the queue, it is appended to the end of the queue or the back of the queue. The worker threads or processes dequeue tasks from the front of the queue and process them one by one. The task queue ensures that the workers process the tasks in the order they were added. And it also helps balance the workload among the workers. Task queues are commonly used in distributed systems and parallel computing environments where multiple threads or processes are used to process tasks simultaneously. They are also used in web applications to manage the processing of background tasks or to schedule delayed or periodic tasks. And a popular implementation of task queues is one of them is Celery. What are the applications of Celery? Here are several categories of when to use Celery. The first one is background processing. Celery can be used to run time-consuming tasks in the background, allowing the web applications to respond quickly to user requests, such as image processing, video transcoding, data analysis. The second category is asynchronous tasks. Celery can, can be used to perform tasks asynchronously without blocking the main application thread. We can use it for sending emails, web scraping, real-time processing, and uh, integrating with third-party APIs. The third category is scheduled tasks. Uh, we can use Celery to schedule tasks to run at specific times or intervals. It is especially useful for backups, notifications, reports. And finally, Celery can be used for distributed computing. Uh, we can use Celery to distribute a heavy tasks among multiple distributed machines. We can uh, name applications such as uh, training machine learning models, distributed processing, and high performance computing in this category. Now let's take a look at Celery architecture. As you know, Celery is a distributed task queue system that allows you to execute tasks asynchronously across multiple worker nodes. The architecture of Celery is based on a combination of message passing and client server model. When you create a task in Celery, it gets added 
to a task queue which is usually implemented using a message broker such as RabbitMQ, Redis, or Amazon SQS. The message broker acts as a middleman between the client and the workers. The client puts a message on the queue and the worker pulls message from the queue and executes them. Salary workers are responsible for executing the tasks. Workers are typically separate processes or threads that listen to the task queue for new tasks to execute. When a worker receives a task, it deserializes the task from the message, executes the task, and then sends the result back to the broker or inside a database. The salary client is responsible for creating and sending tasks to the task queue. The client can be a Python script, a Django application, or any other application that can connect to the message broker. Overall, the architecture of salary allows for distributed task execution where tasks can be executed on any available worker node in a scalable and fault tolerant manner. And in this diagram, you notice that the green elements are for salary. Producer is the section of the salary that actually creates a task and adds it to the message broker. And consumer is the other end of the salary that actually uh, dequeues tasks from the queue and executes them. So consumer are basically uh, worker nodes and producer are producers are um, Python scripts or any uh, application that can create tasks. Now that we have a basic understanding of how salary works, let's implement a simple example. To do so, we need to install a message broker. We will use RabbitMQ as our broker. And to install a RabbitMQ, we will use the Docker image for the RabbitMQ and the instructions are here. If you haven't installed Docker in your platform, please go to this link and based on your operating system, install the Docker for your uh, operating system. Or you can use a RabbitMQ without installing a Docker and you can install RabbitMQ on your operating system. But I prefer you to use Docker for this kind of tasks. So after installing Docker, I can use this, the first instruction to pull the Docker image for RabbitMQ in, from Docker Hub and create a Docker container for RabbitMQ, which is our message broker. And after that, we are ready to install Celery. To install Celery, I personally prefer to, first of all, create a virtual environment for my Python projects and then add the package inside that virtual environment. And I usually use pipenv as my virtual environment. So you can go to this address and install pipenv on your operating system. After installing pipenv, and we can use pipenv install salary to install the salary package in our environment. And after that, we can create tasks and just code. And our simple task is to just define a function to add two uh, inputs, x and y, and return the sum of them. So this is our simple tasks for salary. I have opened three terminal windows to show three elements of the salary architecture. In the first 
terminal, we will produce tasks. In the second terminal, we will install and use a message broker, which is RabbitMQ. And in the third terminal, we will run worker nodes for salary. So first of all, let's install RabbitMQ in our OS using Docker. Docker run dash d dash dash name. The name of our container is Rabbit, and we expose two ports of the container, which is the first one is for Rabbit MQ message passing mechanism, and the second port is for um, the Rabbit MQ management console, which we will show you in a short time. Rabbit MQ three dash management. This is how we can install our uh, message broker using Docker. Now we can check our container. This is our container and this is the image that we use to create the container. We can also see the logs of the container using this command with the name of the container. And as you can see, everything works perfectly and our message broker is up and running and we can go to install salary. First of all, let's enable our virtual environment and in this virtual environment we can install the salary package for our simple project and let's create tasks.py file for our tasks and write the tasks using Visual Studio Code. Let's open this file and from salary package import the salary class and let's define a salary object using this class. This class requires three arguments. The first one is the module name, the second one is a broker broker which we are going to define and the third one is the backend which we are going to define in short our broker is um, rabbit mq so we use amqp protocol to connect to the broker and the default username and password is guest and guest and our broker is in our local host with port 5672 and for the backend we use again the rabbit mq which is defined using this command so we have defined broker and backend to be both the um, rabbit mq now let's add our task which is add adding two numbers and returning the result and we also need to add the task decorator here uh, so that uh, the salary knows that this is our task now let's test this must be broker let's correct it and now let's open terminal and in the third terminal let's define our salary worker node using this command which is this task is just our module's name worker log level is info and as you can see in this line our salary is able to connect to 
Rabbit MQ message broker. If you go to Rabbit MQ management console, we can see that Celery is able to connect to this uh, message broker. Now we are ready to produce tasks and see the results. So in the first terminal, let's go to the Python terminal and from tasks import the add task and we store the result in the res variable and we call this task using this method and we add two numbers one and four we can use the uh, ready method to see if the result is ready or not and also dot get method to see if the result is ready to be read so as you can see everything works perfectly and our message broker and salary can be able to communicate to each other through this simple mechanism we can define other tasks uh, as simple as the first one for example we can uh, define a task for calling an api as defined in this uh, example or we can send an email using celery so we can define a task for sending an email using django send email so now that we have know the basics of celery we can integrate it in our python projects django projects flask projects and we can uh, use it for uh, improving the performance of our web applications i hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any suggestion any comment feel free to ask thank you for watching